Yes, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Wallina channel. We have a Chelsea news video today. A lot of news to cover today. Big news that happened within the club. Some news outside the club. Obviously, Borussia Dortmund made the UCL final for the first time in 11 years back at Wembley with one of our current players who is on loan there being Ian Madsen. We have a lot of stuff to discuss. Thomas Tuchel, what he's doing at the Bernabeu to prepare for the match against Real Madrid. And just crazy stuff to talk about. So let's get right to it, man. The first news we're going to talk about today. It's been a freaking hectic week for Chelsea. Not only have we somehow resuscitated our season by beating Newcastle. No, by beating West Ham and by beating Tottenham Hotspur in two big London derbies to get us back into the race for Europa League. But today, the very important thing is the Player of the Year awards were taking place today at Stamford Bridge. And let me show you who ended up being our player of the year for this season. Check this out. So Chelsea on Twitter posted a double swoop for our number 20. Congratulations to your men's player of the year and the player's player of the year, Mr. Cole Palmer himself. There he is holding his two awards in his first ever season at Chelsea in his first true season of consistent professional football. He sweeps the awards table with his manager right there, Mauricio Pochettino, who looks very proud of him. I'm so proud of Cole Palmer, man. This guy has honestly brung life back to Chelsea. He brought it back to Chelsea, man. And I can't thank him enough, man, for the contribution that he's had to this club ever since joining for Manchester City late in the transfer window. It's absolutely unbelievable the impact that this man has had at our club. Merely coming in as a fresh professional, if you're asking me, obviously scored some big goals, some big goals at Manchester City, but never got that consistent playing time that he was looking for. He pushed for that move out, and I couldn't be happier with his contribution to the club, man. Level-headed, very professional player, never involved in scandals, always puts down his head to work, big game player. That's why they call him Cold Pomerini. I mean, unbelievable, man. Very happy to have this guy at our club. He gives me Eden Hazard vibes, just the levels that he's brought back to this football club. Finally, a player with some individual brilliance that could change a game within the matter of an instant. That is Cole Palmer for us, man. He He's our new Eden Hazard, whether you like it or not. He is our main man that we're going to go to, and I couldn't be happier than to give it to any other guy than Cole Palmer. I'm sure this voting was absolutely unanimous. Maybe Connor Gallagher had a couple mentions in there, but very well-deserved for Cole Palmer. Cheeky little round of applause. Very happy for the lad. Glad he's at Chelsea. But who did Cole Palmer vote for as his player of the year? Check this out. So Cole Palmer says, My vote for player's player was Malo Gusto. I love playing with him on the right. He's been amazing this season when he's played as well. Game recognized game, man. That right-hand side is absolutely brilliant for us. We are covered for years to come. We have Cole Palmer and Noni Madueke on the right. Reese James and Malo Gusto as the other options in that right back. Unbelievable right-hand side. Something that this club finally did right in the recruitment is building up our right-hand side. And I'm very happy to have these players. And I would not have been mad at Malo Gusto picking up the Players Player of the Year award. However, we all know Cole Palmer was the most deserving of it. Conor Gallagher probably in second place. And Malo Gusto would for sure be the third place. Either him or Thiago Silva. Because our contributions to this club have been genuinely immense in what has been a topsy-turvy season. But I'm, I'm proud of the boys, man. I'm proud how we've managed to turn this season around. And I'm just hoping, I'm praying we make that Europa League spot, man. Because check this out, bro. This is how close we are to Europa League positions. So if I'm correct, if Man City manages to win the FA Cup, which they most likely will against Man United, unless they pull out a ridiculous upset, sixth place will qualify for the Europa League. Fifth and sixth place, meaning that seventh place will go to Conference League. Would I be mad at Conference League? Not necessarily, but I wouldn't really like it. If I'm being completely honest, I would rather us not even finish in the top seven if it meant we were playing Conference League football because I just don't like that competition. It seems like a bit of a joke. But if we do manage to get into sixth place, I would be so thrilled, man. This club needs to be playing in a top European competition. And the Europa League is a very respectable competition that we've obviously played in twice and won twice. So if we're in to play in it again one more time, yes, we do have a Spursy manager in Mauricio Pochettino. But the team is starting to click, man. The team is starting to cook something good. And if he's just given his continuity, which I have not been asking for this whole season, if I'm being completely honest, I've been asking for him to get sacked. I haven't liked his, his football that he's been giving our side. 
But in these past few games, Chelsea has been playing absolutely unbelievable, like the Chelsea of old. Two clean sheets back-to-back. When's the last time we heard that as Chelsea fans? And look at this. We are two points behind Newcastle with three games to play. They have some pretty tough fixtures coming up. They have Brighton and Man United. We have Brighton, Bournemouth, and uh, Nottingham Forest, who we play this weekend. So it should be a very exciting end to the season. Can we make fifth place? I don't really think so. I think it's a little bit out of reach unless Tottenham absolutely fumble the bag in the last three games of the season. I think they have the Europa League, the Europa League play secured, but you never know. But yeah, let's let's finish the season on a high, man. Let's freaking finish it well. So Alfie Gilchrist did get the Men's Academy Player of the Year. Proper baller, bro. This guy is Brexit personified, bro. The black boots, the skinhead, no nonsense. He might as well have a tucked-in kit. Just like Aspilicueta as well, but he doesn't. This guy just cares about his football and nothing else. Never gets into any scandals. Doesn't do outlandish stuff on social media. Just puts his head down and gets to work, man. Those are the types of players you love to see. Co-signed by John Terry. This guy absolutely buzzes about Alfie Gilchrist. Says he's the next, next John Terry. And I would have to second that, man. This guy looks like he's a future leader for the club. I'm going to back him every single time he steps on the pitch. And he hasn't set a foot wrong, if I'm completely honest. So very well deserved for the young Alfie Gilchrist getting his breakthrough season. We saw a little of him in preseason and I thought, okay, he looks decent, but I don't think he'll get many minutes this season, especially considering the fact that he's kind of a short center back. But now he's being played at right back with the injuries to Malo Gusto and to Reese James. And he's being he's being a phenomenal player. He's stepped up to the role, hasn't been scared, and has just been contributing so well to the side. So I'm hoping we keep him for next year, give him some more continuity in the side. And just wish him for the best, man. I'm very happy to have this guy in the club. Some proper Chels DNA. Up the Chels. Let's go, man. Alfie Gilchrist, Men's Academy Player of the Year. After that, moving on to a player that's going to be sold. Another Academy player. Check this out. Fabrizio Romano posts that Chelsea and Armando Broya are planning to part ways this summer. Permanent transfer expected as soon as he returns from the Fulham loan. The Albanian number one strikers on the list of several clubs in Europe and Premier League looking at him as the main option. Very heartfelt for Armando Broya. Obviously, he was having a decent trajectory for us, especially last season coming into the side under Graham Potter, the worst manager in Chelsea history. But he gave Armando Broya the opportunity, which I'm very happy for him to have done. But unfortunately, he got his bad ACL tear over in a dumb preseason, uh, midseason friendly that we had over in the States. Very bad decision by the club. Only a bad thing could come from that. And he unfortunately might have ruined his career because of that. Will he ever make it at the very top level? I do not think so because he just hasn't looked the same player after that. But I don't want to be the guy who doubts Armando Broya. I wish he was given a little bit more of an opportunity to stay at the club, especially this season considering the fact that Nicholas Jackson is our only trusted striker that we've had in the squad. Yes, Jackson has been given more consistent minutes starting basically every game he's been available for with Armando Broya leaving on loan to Fulham, but... It's going to be kind of a bittersweet ending, kind of a sad ending for Armando Broy at Chelsea. I just wish it would have worked out better, but I wish him the best in wherever he goes. I could see him playing at a Nottingham Forest, something like that, maybe going to Serie A, to Napoli, AC Milan, one of those clubs, and see him doing well because he's a big, powerful striker who just needs some continuity in the side and some confidence and support from the manager. On to the next bit of Chelsea news. We have Ian Matson. Look at this. Obviously, through to the UCL final. So happy for this guy, man. Special moment for Ian Matson here with his family after the game. May 2023, in the championship with Burnley, second division of England. August 2024, Burnley permanent deal rejected by the player. He wanted to prove himself at Chelsea. However, Mauricio Pochettino didn't give him any playing time, whether it was because of his own decision or because of the owners putting pressure on him to not play him anymore because they want to sell him for pure profit. That ends with him... Consequently, joining Borussia Dortmund on loan in January of this year. And within a matter of months, he is going to play in a UCL final as a solid mainstay starter in this wonderful Borussia Dortmund team. So this guy proving the doubters wrong, proving Pochettino wrong, proving Todd Boley, Bedad Bali, these clown owners wrong, that he's a top quality player that could cut it at the European elite of the elite level. So very happy for him there with his family. 35 million pound release clause into his Chelsea contract. If we could only up that, that would be best. But I think Borussia Dortmund will pay that because he's been an absolutely fantastic servant for them. Very happy for Ian Madsen. Still a Chelsea player. Very sad that these owners didn't allow it to work out because he is genuine quality. 
but it's okay. Marco Gurria has been absolutely incredible. Let's hope he continues his great form in that inverted fullback position. The second to last thing of today, this pains me to see, man, but I'm happy for him as well. Thiago Silva wearing his Fluminense kit, which is the club that he will be joining next season in the summer and he will be joining them until june 2026 that's when his contract runs out with them so one year contract 15 years after leaving to join ac milan in europe then he went to psg and then chelsea Thiago returns where his fantastic journey started in 1998 absolutely insane 26 years later he's back in brazil man in his hometown his family looks very happy what a brilliant player he was for Chelsea. Nothing but respect for this guy. A proper Chelsea legend. I'll always love this guy. I have him on the back of my Chelsea kit of this year. Brilliant player. My personal favorite Chelsea player of all time. Love this guy. Wish him nothing but the best. And it pains me to see him in another club shirt. But that's just how football works, man. I love Thiago Silva. Hoping for the very best. Oh, Thiago Silva. The GOAT. And last but not least. Look at this drip god. Thomas Tuchel at the Bernabeu. What a manager, man. My manager. My proper elite gaffer. Look at that aura, bro. I know this is glazing, but Thomas Tuchel. Do not be surprised if he pulls out an unbelievable result at the Bernabeu with his Bayern side. The most doubted manager of all time. The manager that proves everyone wrong. That won a UCL with an average Chelsea side, if we're being completely honest. This guy has absolutely everything in his locker to win another ucl to reach his third ucl final in the last five years if there's anyone in world football that could achieve that feat it's absolutely thomas tuchel i'm gonna be back in byron tomorrow i want him to do well i want him to freaking get to that ucl final and win it to prove the byron fans wrong to prove the byron owners wrong to prove these mediocre chelsea owners wrong and to prove that he's the best manager in the world in my opinion i love this guy man other than that guys other than this Chelsea news, I'll see you guys in the next one. Big game coming up. Bayern Munich versus Real Madrid. And peace.